Mr. Brown. God bless you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. In Georgia, it was a rally for Trump supporters with a local Republican chairman. That didn't work out. We'll repair that. Everybody's okay, thank goodness. A close call because of reckless weight distribution was a metaphor for MAGA and Trump instability throughout the weekend. Bring your toothbrush, Donald Trump, because you're going to sit in a jail cell for a while. A former judge predicted Donald Trump would soon be behind bars if he continues violating a court gag order. There has to be an immediate consequence when he defies a court order. That is a normal response. On Easter Sunday, Trump's angry social media bender was not normal, even by Trump standards. From sunrise to sunset, the presumptive 2024 Republican nominee spent the day airing his grievances. And what you saw over the weekend was not an actual parody. Uh Trump appeared to be glued to his phone, posting 77 times on Truth Social. Trump also shared two articles that compared him, him, to Jesus Christ. One was titled, quote, The Crucifixion of Donald Trump. And the other wrote that something, quote, supernatural was happening with Trump, whom the author described as a miracle. Trump has posted items before comparing himself to Jesus or a Messiah. In December, Trump shares bizarre biblical videos saying God made him to be America's caretaker. God had to have somebody willing to go into the den of vipers, call out the fake news for their tongues as sharp as a serpent's. The poison of vipers is on their lips, and yet stop. So God made Trump. And all they're doing is setting themselves up for a blistering parody of this. The parody came courtesy of the Lincoln Project. God said, I need a corrupt man who is above the law and immune from justice. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man who will use violence to seize power. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man whose followers will call black white, call evil good, and call criminals hostages. So God made a dictator. <laughs> as humorous as the Trump God parodies are, the problem is that the Trump MAGA world doesn't care. And over Easter weekend, the MAGA morons were obsessed with misleading and false claims about President Biden, claims created by conservative media. The first was that Joe Biden had replaced Easter with Trans Visibility Day. Quote, today we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved, you are heard, you are understood, you belong, you are America, and my entire administration and I have your back. What many on the right wing did not point out is that March 31st has long been celebrated as Trans Visibility Day. Easter this year just happened to fall on March the 31st. There was no replacement of Easter, just a celebration of both at the Biden White House. The second ridiculous right-wing canard was that Joe Biden had eliminated religious symbols on White House Easter eggs. The White House also banned religious themed designs from the White House Easter uh, egg art contest, when the whole point of Easter is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a religious holiday, a religious celebration. But that ban on religious themed artwork has been the protocol at the White House for 45 years, all the way back to and including President Ronald Reagan. Reagan and every president since then has kept White House Easter eggs from having any religious symbols. But of course, that wasn't explained by much of the right-wing media. So the MAGA Trump crowd was treated over the weekend as something of a split screen that fed their own lunatic narratives about President Biden. On MSNBC, Charlie Sykes. In a split screen world, you have Donald Trump with the unhinged rants, but his base is hearing, you know, this other message that it is Joe yeah. Biden who is the enemy of God and of faith. And it is and it is Donald Trump who is the defender of the faith. It is it's so absurd, but I think we need to understand and come to grips with the way in which we have this this completely alternative narrative out there that has really no relationship to reality, but which is very, very potent in American politics these days. And it's potent because it serves as rocket fuel for the MAGA conservatives who want to despise President Biden and believe that Biden and the Democrats are doing the work of Satan. And with many of the MAGA faithful, there is no reasoning about things like the separation of church and state or about religious freedom. Do you think this should be a Christian country? Oh, I do. I do. We were founded on God, and <laughs> Democrats are taking them away, taking them out of the school. How about reconciling separation of church and state, which we were founded on? And I don't think that's right. I do not think that's right. They should have never did that. Why would you take something as beautiful as America 
that we founded God on. We founded America on God. Why would you try to destroy that and take it out of the schools and try to teach our children well, something that's... That's what I mean about separation of church and state. That's, it is, shouldn't be, though. God should be, we should be able to say in Jesus' name, you know, and I, I don't care what, what religion you are, because if we unite and come together as all in one, they'll find the true God. A true God, as in the Christian God, because that's America. Well, the narrow-mindedness in Trump world extends not just to religion, but also to basic political realities. And even right-wing media has repeatedly claimed that Donald Trump is crushing Biden, that there's no possible way Joe Biden can honestly win the 2024 race. The fact is that Biden is now even with Donald Trump in many polls. And in fundraising, Joe Biden and the Democrats are far ahead of Trump and the Republicans. This truth bomb was delivered recently live on Fox News by Jessica Tarlov, the lone liberal host on the show The Five. I'm gonna pretend that everything is calm and beautiful and think if the election was held today that it would be a landslide. It, this is a dead heat race and it's going to be a dead heat race on November 5th as well. I mean, these, these elections are decided by tens of thousands of people in a few key states mm -hmm. and, and that's it. But the idea that Joe Biden is struggling to raise money is ludicrous. The man had a $10 million haul in the 24 hours after the State of the Union. He had the largest fundraising month on record in February. The RNC is in complete tatters. The DNC is cruising. And anyone in their right mind would give almost anything to be able to raise $25 million in one night. And it's custom for previous presidents to campaign with the new presidents of their own party. No one made fun of Barack Obama when he said, Bill Clinton is my explainer in chief. I, I can't connect with people in kind of a folksy way, so I need Bill Clinton to come with me and to explain my policies this way. And then Obama obviously campaigned for Hillary Clinton, who didn't win the race, but for Joe Biden, and Bill Clinton was out there for him too. This is what you do, and, and there is a common enemy, and the enemy is whoever is at the top of the Republican ticket, and that is a shared mission. But, you know, Donald Trump will get his money out of the SPAC for sure, but you have this contrast of someone who is selling out events like this, which by the way has tickets that go for $200, it's not all $500,000, and Donald Trump is on, you know, doing ads, hawking $60 Bibles, he's siphoning off donor money to pay for his legal fees. It's a pretty stark contrast. Mm. In other words, Donald Trump and the Republicans are in trouble financially. Trump still has four criminal trials ahead of him. Trump could be jailed for violating a court gag order. And Trump's ransom becomes so frequent and unhinged that dementia Don is now a serious point of political discussion. If you believe in karma, the Trump behavior will come back to haunt him. The cluelessness of MAGA supporters toward Trump and in podium setups, well, that's already on display. My black jacket, and that, that didn't work out. We'll repair that. Mm, stay clear. By the way, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders recently hijacked a Fox News ambush interview to drop a truth bomb about the American work week. I didn't Excuse get to ask you a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator, I You want to hold it, okay? We held a hearing on a 32-hour work week because what we have seen is that over the last 50 years, despite a huge increase in worker productivity, almost all of the new wealth has gone to the top 1%, while 60% of the people are living paycheck to paycheck. Mm, check out that video at the link below. It generated a lot of comments on YouTube. One of the most popular is from RC7625, who wrote, Despite what Republicans and certain Democratic Party supporters say, Bernie is an American hero. I agree. I look forward to reading your comments about how karma now seems to be coming back to haunt Donald Trump and MAGA world. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.